So, yes, sir. Starting with the rest of the Lakers. Um, oh man, you, you go ahead and, and take point on this one. What do you want to talk about first? Um, there's so much to talk about with the refs. I, I, I mean, know. I don't even know where to start. I mean, if you want to just go by stats, I mean, ten points a game, four assists. He's getting his rebounds almost seven, but he's shooting twenty eight percent from the field and eight percent from the three. <laughs> Eight percent from the three. <laughs> that is horrible. Yeah, I, I. It's just I can't blame all of it on Russ. I mean, just the lack of shooting the Lakers. The Lakers do have with eighty shooting only twenty percent from the three, and you got LeBron shooting twenty five percent from the three. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a lot of great shooters out there. I mean. So far, three games into the season, they have attempted 118 threes and only made 25. Yeah, that's horrible. 21% from three, Ryan. 21% from three. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll just start with, with the rest. Um, <sighs> obviously, even as soon as he was traded to the Lakers, I was skeptical because he's only operated on teams that have been built around him with at least decent shooters. Going into the Lakers, that was going to be the antithesis of his entire career. Not much shooting, and he was going to be like the third option. So there is going to be an uphill battle from the beginning. And, and last year we saw that, but he was still able to, to contribute. And he got 17-7-7 seven and seven pretty much, and he shot... Like I think like 44% from the field, which isn't great, but you know it's it's good for a starting point guard not on a championship contending team. But he what he provided some impact. So for that reason, I wasn't going to attribute last year's struggles mainly to Westbrook, even though everybody else was. Um, Frank Vogel, I mean not Frank Vogel. Also, everybody blamed Frank Vogel last year, which he has some poor rotations. But uh, Rob Palinka was the main guy to blame last year for the rotation and, and personnel that he thought would work and everybody else didn't think would work, and we saw that it didn't work. That doesn't change this year. Um, he, the shooting, yeah, he didn't get any, he didn't really get any, <laughs> like, not one guy who's been known as a above-average three-point shooter for the entire career. Not one. Um, that's... That's a recipe for disaster. So that's why um, I have a gripe with Palinka. And then I also have a gripe with, I guess, the players and, and Darvin Ham. Because even though everybody knows that y'all can't shoot, you still shouldn't shoot the ball. Like, obviously, these are open three-point shots that you, you are generating. But a lot of them, they're just giving them to you. <laughs> like, these teams, yeah. they're literally... <laughs> Nurk, I think I sent you the clip last night, but Nurkic yeah. literally turned around when AD caught the ball in the corner. He turned around. He, he turned, picked his nose, too. His, he turned around. <laughs> he picked his nose. And the ball came off the side of the backboard. At the end of the game, they had Nurkic just standing in the paint, technically guarding Russell Westbrook. He was matched up against Russell Westbrook. Yeah, but they just had that. him standing in the paint because... Everybody in the fucking league knows that these niggas can't shoot. And they continue to shoot. Like, shooting a three ball should be the last resort. They shouldn't shoot. They should continue to try and get AD in the post, run pick and rolls with Braun and AD, or just get to the rim. And they shouldn't shoot a three until it's, like, three seconds left in the shot clock and there's nothing else to do. Like, that's the point that the Lakers are at right now. And... I don't know why Darvin Ham really isn't emphasizing that. I don't know why he's telling these motherfuckers to keep shooting the ball when it's obvious that they're not going to fall right now. And, yeah, they don't have any shooters, but for some reason, they're fucking stubborn. Um, you want to you wanna, you wanna know the sad part about it? You know who's the best shooter on that team career-wise? I would, Can you take a guess? I would guess either LeBron or Lonnie Walker. It's Patrick Beverly. <laughs> Coming in with 35% from the three for a career. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable, man. Yo, that's crazy. That's actually crazy. But Patrick Beverly. I did just mention Lonnie Walker's name. He's been he's been 
putting in some effort. He's not shooting the three ball either, like really well. No. But he's been able to get to the rim and attack, and he's been aggressive. And that's he's another, great, yeah. That's another thing with Russ. Like, I, I don't know if he has like his bounce is pretty much gone. Like, he's been getting blocked at the rim a lot. He got blocked like three times by Jeremy Grant. So I don't know. I mean, he had some in the game last night, or I was, I watched it last night because I was at work during the afternoon. He had some good yeah. passes. Uh, he didn't have a single turnover yesterday, and he had five assists. That's good. But like, I don't know. He had a he had a mid range bank shot that went in. So I. <laughs> What? You, you can tell you can tell he's not he you can tell he's not comfortable out there he, he just oh, you can yeah. just tell he, he has no confidence no more man they the, just no there more. was a play in which uh i think it was like five seconds left on the clock lonnie walker got a drive he beat his primary defender and then russ was in the corner the guy i forgot who it was but he helped off a of russ to to like stop lonnie walker from driving and russ had his hands up <laughs> Like asking for the ball, and Lottie Walker didn't even look his direction. I, I think I saw that. And then, and I, I don't know if he turned it over or just bricked a layup. But after the Trailblazers got the rebound, Russ just he didn't run, he didn't get back on um, in transition defense. He just stayed in the corner. He was in disbelief. <sighs> it's so just... it's it's bad all around, man. Like his team, they they he didn't even look his way for a quarter yeah. three. That's bad. Shit like I, that. I don't get. I, I don't know if you saw the the clip of LeBron holding his hands up, like like to Russ, like what are you doing when he took that shot with twenty eight mm. seconds left. But then in the post game, he's trying to protect Russ. Yeah, and saying, no. like he what? contradicted himself. <laughs> it was well, him, going off. Yeah, him and AD, they did the same thing. Like, it's just a whole mess all around, dude. A whole mess. And the, the bad thing is, like, their defense has actually been really good this year. Like, <laughs> l- last night, <It's... laughs> their defense kept them in the game. Like, it literally kept them in the game. But they just went on a fucking little four-minute drought where they could not get anything to go to go in, and they kept settling for three-point shots. Their defense was actually good, but it's the offense. You... The crazy part is is that among the, the teams with a three-game sample size, the best defensive rating in the NBA belongs to the Lakers. Oh, wow. That's that's unbelievable to me. And let me guess, their offensive rating is like 29th or 30th. But, yeah, it's the 30th, I think. It's the worst. It's, yep, it's 30th. It, it's it, They have a great def- – I can't believe they have a great defensive team. I'm, I'm shocked saying that compared to where they were last year. Yeah, I know. But, I mean – I, I think it's just them being younger. And AD had like five blocks last game, too. He had six blocks. Six yeah, blocks. He was going yeah, off. Monster. Um, what What would you say is the solution if you had to come up with one? I, I heard people saying give it 20 games and then see where you guys are at. I say give it 10 games at least. 20 games, it might be too it might late. Be too late. It might be too late to trade Russ. Um... I also, I think they got to wait, or I, I don't know how long Dennis Schroeder is going to be out, but he could really help their offense, especially off the bench. Um, he could. <sighs> but, I, I mean, he's not really a 30-point, like, he's not sh- He's not, he's not shooter, a shooter, no, no but he can, just make, he can just make things happen. He has a decent mid-range game. Um, but I think... Darvin Ham, he just has to tell these motherfuckers, y'all can't shoot. Y- y'all niggas cannot shoot. Like he literally needs to say that verbatim. Like it's it has to it has I, to be said. It has to be emphasized. I think AD has to be a bit more aggressive in in terms of getting some post up looks. Like turn into AD from fucking the Pelicans. This the is the bubble, what, yeah. The bubble, especially in the Pelicans. Like especially when LeBron is at this age, AD was literally supposed to take the torch and just be that guy. Like LeBron should not have to average 27 11 and 7 at this point in his career like ad literally needs to be the guy for them to have any success and just be more aggressive but i don't know if he's wired like that right hmm. ad is averaging 24 8 
and one assist per game. It's not enough, dude. It's not enough. One assist per game. It's not enough. One, yeah, one assist, not enough. I'm shocked with the one assist. That's I'm just shocked. I kind of am, but I mean, if you're a big man, mainly your assists are going to come off of kicking it out to catch and shooters. <laughs> So, but they have no shooters. They have no shooters, exactly. <laughs> it's like, uh Everybody's going to talk about the Buddy Heald and Miles Turner trade, but I don't know how how possible that is because I feel like other teams out there can offer a better package to get both way of them or just one of them. Like, everybody just assumes that the Lakers are the only team that's that wants Buddy Heald and, and Miles Turner. No, there's fucking 29 other teams that could use their services as well. But the thing that the Lakers have is that they have that, those two future picks in 2027 and 2029 or something like that. The Lakers yeah. won't be good. I don't think the Lakers will be good during that time because LeBron will probably be retired and AD will probably be somewhere else. Mm, possibly, might- yeah. The Lakers won't be good in the future when you think so. Those two picks hold a lot of value com- to other teams. Yeah, that's when you true. You think about it, but they are like really far down the line. Like I know, like five or six <laughs> years from now. And in terms yeah. of like maybe a team has like more like some actual young players on their team that they might want to trade that are attracted to the Pacers. But yeah, I heard they they were trying to target. Terry Rozier, but that's like another point guard. It's like oh, he's don't decent, need any more but it's, fucking point guards. Yeah, they got too many point guards already. They also, I know we just talked about like the Lakers. Their defense has been really good, but uh, like if there's when they go up against like more talented teams that have like shooting guards and small forwards, yeah, that. That, that's going to be a problem because Braun was getting burned by Jeremy Grant <laughs> late in the game. He is the same. You know, like he's he, he's not going to be guarding. He's not going to be the guy to guard like Kawhi, PG. No. Um, fuck it, even Andrew Wiggins if Jeremy Grant was burning this man. Like, so they, they don't have like a wing defender in their starting lineup at least. And why wasn't Patrick Beverly oh guarding Damian God. Lillard in – like oh the last five God. minutes. Why did they have Lonnie Walker on that man? I don't know, dude. Like the whole I, fucking reason he was brought here. And Patrick Beverly was playing great defense on him that quarter. And but I, I, there's no way. Dar- I think Darwin had made like that, that decision, but that makes no sense to me. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't get it. Like. Well, I knew as soon as I saw Lonnie Walker, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Dude, Dave literally it's... just walked up the floor, eight seconds. As soon as he got to the three-point line, did one pound dribble to the left, step back. That was so easy. Cash. That was like a Cash. that was like a practice shot, man. I, oh, my God. I was so fucking pissed. They should have. If they don't want to have Patrick Beverly on him, I, I guess. Uh, but, Darren who Hamm, else are you? Yeah. But. They should have doubled him at least. Get the ball out. There's literally nobody else on the court that you're worried about besides like Damian Lillard at that point in the game, especially maybe in the entire maybe NBA. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about just in terms of just clutch. Oh, yeah. Who do you want taking yeah. that shot? Of course, Portland wants Dame taking the shot. Take the ball out of his hands, double him, and just rotate after that. Like, if you're not gonna have Patrick Beverly guarding one on one, but yeah, that was odd. How you feel about Darvin Ham so far? Because there's been a lot of questions about why he put Westbrook back in when the Lakers mm. had like a seven point lead and they had good flow come in with the other players they had in, but they brought Westbrook back in. Yeah, um, I I still need more time. Like that decision was a bit odd. I don't think Russell Westbrook single handedly derailed them for the past like the last four minutes. There's other shit that happened, but. Yeah. Obviously, with it being Russell Westbrook, everybody's going to talk about it. But, yeah, I mean, even – it's just kind of like a general thing as a coach. When you have a five that is rolling and in, in, in rhythm for the last six minutes of the quarter, you just roll with that five. And he didn't do yeah. that for some reason, especially with Russ having a bad game shooting. But, yeah, I got to give it more time. I'll probably give it ten, ten games before I really Ten decide. games? Ten games? On All him, right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I want to talk about the Lakers anymore. <laughs> Sad, man. Um, next, we got 